Good morning, everybody. New to Dungeons and Dragons Online with Update 56, we're getting an entirely new character building method called Archetypes. So what is an archetype and how do you do it? I'll give you all that information right now. The key things you need to know, number one, they are alternate classes. Think of it like a variant class of sorts. So if you decide to play as an archetype, so say right here, cleric is getting the dark apostate. When you create your cleric, you're either creating a cleric or a dark apostate cleric. It's like a separate class kind of, it's like a separate version of that same class. Uh, so how much does it cost? Zero. You do not have to buy these. These are free right out of the get-go, which is very cool. Additionally, do you have to earn special past lives? Because these are like different classes. There are past lives that you do earn. However, the um, they count as the actual regular class for the purposes of completionist. So if you're worried about like, oh, do I have to re-farm out past lives? Do I have to do that stuff? You don't have to do any of that. If you already have cleric before, you'll still have cleric for completionist. But if you haven't done any cleric past lives, you can do either a cleric past life or a dark apostate. So now that that stuff's out of the way, what is it? Well, the subclasses or archetypes, sorry, as they call them, are basically going to be changing some things about the um, individual classes. So for example, as the dark apostate cleric, um, instead of getting cure spells as your default spell, you'll now get inflict spells. And instead of having the radiant servant enhancement tree, you have a new dark apostate tree. So it's kind of interesting, and there are three different um, archetypes here. The Dark Apostate for Cleric, the Storm Singer for Bard, and the Sacred Fist for Paladin. So let's go into each one of these three. So first, you have the Dark Apostate, um, who is the uh, kind of for Cleric. So as I said, you get the Inflict Wound spells instead of Cure Wounds, and you get negative Healing Amp and negative Spell Power for every uh, past life. Now, why does this matter? Because the Dark Apostate actually gets an Undead Shroud. Many people have asked me in the following or the previous days, how do I play a Necromancer Cleric? Do I take Wizard so I can get you know, uh, negative healing to scale all my negative healing and stuff. Turns out, no, the answer is just play as uh, a dark apostate now, and you'll be able to play as the fully undead cleric of your dreams. As you get in higher levels, you get more incorporeality, as well as some extra bonuses and necromancy stuff. But on top of that, the dark apostate excels in two major areas. First, they excel very heavily in different types of debuffs. They get sp prayer spell-like ability, bane spell-like ability, and cursed words, which allows them to curse enemies with no save. Additionally, they also get bestow curse, doom, and bane with no save on all their spells, which means you can heavily debuff monsters that you need to encounter, which is incredibly good. On top of that, they get bonuses with turning, so they can turn even more than a regular cleric. Uh, they also get extra damage added onto their weapons, like evil damage, so it's kind of like this weird hybrid melee spellcaster kind of negative cleric. And as you move further into the tree, you also get the tier 5 up here, which gives you bonuses with your necromancy spells, as well as protection from alignments, which is like protection from elements, but alignments, which is very cool, as well as no cast maximum cast level on the inflict wound spells. Now you might be wondering to yourself, well, how am I supposed to play this? It doesn't seem very good if I don't get really a lot of bonuses with negative spells. Instead, I'm just getting like all this other stuff. Why would I care about this? And the reason you care about this is because they're entirely also revamping the um, Emissary of Light and Darkness here because they are making the Divine Disciple completely different. So now Divine Disciple is being entirely reworked. It's going to have tons of light and negative crits. So you can play that lighter negative spell caster. You can mix them both up. And on top of that, your Dark Apostate also gains light spell power as well, or alignment, which means you can still cast your alignment and light spells. Now, in here, uh, they basically the major changes, they change up some spell-like abilities. Not all of them are final, so there's some going back and forth, but they change up the spell-like abilities a little bit. They added in a lot more crits, so now instead of having to pick your crit, light or negative or whatever, you just get light, negative, and alignment. You get all three of them, which is fantastic. Um, so you get a whole bunch of crit added onto your character, and the cores are a little bit wacky, and I'm going to show you how. So in-game here, I have my character, uh, Dark Prostate, because I'm a child, and so... Um, this is the enhancement tree. So as you can see here, we have the dark apostate as under the title. So it actually tells you that you're a dark, dark apostate. In fact, if you examine somebody, it says dark apostate 20 as opposed to cleric. Now my icon in the tree is obviously still cleric. When you party with somebody, you're still looking for cleric. So into the grouping menu, it's just cleric. But then when they join, you'll see that they're a dark apostate or whatever it happens to be. 
which is very, very interesting. So this is the tree for the Dark Apostate. It's kind of set up as such. Um, this is the visual of the undead form. So you look kind of very spooky and very undead. However, you also get a weapon imbue that adds evil damage, and it looks pretty evil. It's got like this red uh, darkness effect here, which is pretty neat. Additionally, because you're undead, you can cure yourself with inflict spells. So I can cast inflict on myself. And they also made a change so you don't need to have inflict. You don't have to target yourself to cast inflict spells anymore. They just automatically apply to you, which is very, very cool. Now, let's talk about the Divine Disciple tree. Divine Disciple is going to be very weird, and the main reason is you're going to see this. I can take points at both sides of the tree, and that's because they're the opposite. Light Divine Disciple starts on the left and goes to the right. Dark Divine Disciple starts on the right and goes to the left. So this one has the capstone for the light side. So if you want to go all light, you have to take these in order, left to right. And if you want to be a dark cleric, you have to take the dark side and move right to left. It's very thematic and interesting. Now, you might be wondering why this is done like this. It's actually because you can take both. Should you not want to take a capstone, maybe because you're multi-classing on your clerics, so you're not actually going to be taking one of these capstones. Instead, you can grab some of this, grab some of this, you know, start putting some points into both sides of the tree. And then as a result, um, one of your tier fives up here, there's transcendence. This gives you the spells of the opposite um, cleric or uh, choice. So if you're a light cleric, you gain additional light spells. If you're a darkness cleric, you gain additional darkness spells. So if you are a light cleric and you want the dark ones, you can take the dark spells. If you're a dark cleric and you want the light spells, you can take the light spells. Or if you have points in both of these, you can take Balance, which gives you Word of Balance, which is a fantastic, extremely powerful spell for level 7 on a Cleric, so you've got a lot of interesting options there. Overall, Dark Apostate is going to be heavily focused around enhancing and improving negative spell casting, adding some interesting melee variants to mix it up with Warpriest, um, as well as having a whole host of debuffing and finally giving a negative Cleric that kind of undead form so they can heal themselves with their negative power. Overall, extremely cool, and I'm very much looking forward to playing this out. However... Um, let's get back onto the next one because we're not done yet. Next is Storm Singer. So what is Storm Singer? Storm Singer is basically a bard, but they get new spells. So at first level spell, they get Shocking Grasp that they can take. They can take Electric Loop as a second level spell. They can now take Lightning Bolt as a third level spell. They can take Ball Lightning as a fourth, Chain Lightning as a fifth, and Thunder Stroke as a sixth allowing you to take all these fantastic lightning spells along the way. Now, you know that bards don't normally get lightning spell power, but that's okay. Bards are going to get a new tree. It replaces the swashbuckler tree, and it's called Stormsinger. Um, this is basically so that, you know, your melees, if you want to play as a melee bard, you're playing as like a war chanter of some kind um, on this type of character. I don't know why you'd be a melee Stormsinger, but they got rid of swashbuckler. and said you have Stormsinger. So remember, if you want to play a swashbuckler, you still can. You just got to play a regular bard and not the Stormsinger type. So what exactly does a Storm Singer do? Well, it's got um, some Lightning, Cold, and Sonic spell power for each core ability you take. Now, that might seem weird that it says Cold because Bards don't have Cold spells, but you get a whole bunch from this tree. The main mechanic is that when you cast your Lightning, uh, sorry, your Sonic and Cold spells, you have a 20% chance to cause a Lightning Strike to hit an enemy. This only applies once per spell cast, but there's no internal cooldown. So if you throw out an AoE spell and you hit 10 guys, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a Lightning Strike. If you throw a second AoE and hit 10 guys, you're going to get another Lightning Strike. There's no cooldown on it, but it can only apply once per spell. So, you know, if you could make like a, a character that could multiple hit with this, like a Frost Lance version, it's not going to work because, again, it's only once per spell, but it applies all the time and it deals a D6 damage per cash level, which goes up to a D6 plus two until a D6 plus four until eventually it goes into a D6 plus six all the way up here. Additionally, whenever it goes off, it also causes a stun with no save and eventually that turns into a stun with no save for five seconds. This effect goes off all the time and is very, very valuable. But again, it's only when you cast your Sonic and Cold spells. So you have lightning spells, but you're encouraged to also mix in those other elements of the storm, the thunderous lightning or the hail coming down on enemies. But how do you get cold spells? spell-like abilities. You've got Multi-Selector for Nyax Cold Ray, Nyax Biting Cold, and Snowball Swarm. As well, in your Tier 5, they've also got uh, the ability to get Iceberg as a 6th level spell. Iceberg is the most powerful cold spell in the entire game and is a Sorcerer Wizard exclusive. Additionally, Thunderstroke is the most powerful, powerful lightning spell in the game, only available to Sorcerer and Wizard, except you get it right here, which means Bards can get Thunderstroke and Iceberg, the most powerful spells, which is fantastic. 
So it's very, very cool. Um, on top of that, you'll also notice that there's Sonic Blast, Shout, and Reverberate here. Uh, the way that this works is that Spellsinger has the same spell-like abilities, so they just make it so that they're exclusive. So if you take Shout here, you can't take Shout in Spellsinger, but they also buffed Spellsinger by adding more spell-like abilities, so you can kind of take both, and I'll go over that in a little bit. And then outside of that, you get, like, extra crit damage and other stuff, just some cool things to make your Spellsinger feel pretty, or your Stormsinger feel pretty good. So let's take a look at the Stormsinger here, my Stormy Boy, as I log in. And as I said, in general, you've got like these different trees and their different spell-like abilities. Look at War Chanter over here. So you have the Storm Singer and the Spell Singer. So Spell Singer still has all the stuff it had before. You know, it's got the Spell Song Trance, it's got the Arcane Might buffs, it's got the Healing buff, it's got the Mana buff. Um, but Storm Singer does not have any of those things. It's a damage tree. So if you ever wanted to play DPS Kill Em All Bard instead of like buff your friend's bard, then you can do a little bit of that, but this gives you more hyper focus into that damage. However, uh, Bard Spellsinger is now able to pick up Cure Light Wounds as a spell-like ability or Sonic Blast, and you get Cure Light Wounds Mass or Shout, which means you can take Sonic Blast and Shout out of Stormsinger and then take Cure Light Wounds and Cure Light Wounds Mass out of Spellsinger, which gives you some cool interplay. Um, they currently on the Mania do share a cooldown, these two abilities, so, you know, this and this share a cooldown and this and this, that will not be the case once it actually goes live. You'll also notice that Horn of Thunder is in both of these trees, so uh, very cool. Uh, Horn of Thunder fits well in both of them, so it means you never have to worry about going around without it. Just the big thing is Stormsinger is going to give you that Iceberg spell, whereas Spellsinger gives you... Um, Mass Hold Monster. Where is Mass Hold Monster? Here, Mass Hold Monster. So, which one is better? Well, Mass Hold Monster is obviously very good, but if you can get, like, a bunch of additional DCs or ways to stun monsters in other ways, um, maybe you don't need the Mass Hold. It's entirely up to you, but you get a ton of damage out of the Storm Singer. You also get this effect called Storm Singer's Inspiration, where when you buff your allies, they actually get this Lightning Strike proc on all of their attacks, which is extremely cool and very, very powerful. But as I said, there's no uh, Swashbuckler here, so if you want your fast movement speed, you do have to go into Stormsinger if you want to pick it up, as opposed to Swashbuckler. Overall, very, very cool. I played around with it, and it feels very satisfying to level with. Um, I got to about level 13 and uh, from 4, and again, the whole way through, it felt really, really satisfying. The lightning strikes coming down, it was just very cool and very good. However, that's not the last one. The last one we're going to be looking at today is the new Sacred Fist Paladin. So Paladin is a class that is all about hitting people with favored weapons and divine wrath and all of that. Well, this one is like that, except it's your fists instead. So Sacred Fist is a regular Paladin, except um, they don't get shield proficiency, armor proficiency, or martial weapon proficiency of any kind. You cannot use any weapons or armor. However, instead you get the Path of Light, which lets you use hand wraps and they count as favored weapons. To move even farther beyond that, you also get the armor class bonus for monks, but it's charisma instead of wisdom. You get flurry of blows, unarmed strike, evasion, um, the path of light, divine dream, which is your deity feat, which allows you to be considered in heavy armor while centered for the purposes of sacred defender tree. This doesn't give you physical resistance rating like your heavy armor. What it does instead is it makes you count for the stuff in sacred defender that says you have to be wearing heavy armor to get the effect, like the heavy armor hit points, the heavy armor constitution, and the heavy armor, I think it's the effect that makes you immune to magic missiles, also requires heavy armor. So as a result, this means that you can be like a unarmored paladin tank, which is very, very cool. Additionally, they also gain key, but it uses their charisma. So monks get bonus maximum key based off of their wisdom. Uh, Sacred Fists get bonus key based off of their charisma. Important to note, um, if you have any of these abilities that are monk or like if say multi-class monk and paladin, whichever one is higher, your wisdom or your charisma will take over for the armor bonus and will take over for the key system as well. So you don't have to worry about, oh, which one should you be using or which class you take first? It doesn't matter. So, Sacred Fist, what does it do? It's a little bit different than what you see here. However, Sacred Fist is basically a, um, a buff toggle, where you toggle on a buff and it adds fire damage to all of your attacks, which you can later turn into light damage, so you can avoid uh, all those pesky immunities. Uh, you gain way more than this. This is quite boring, so we'll take a look at the in-game version instead. But it's kind of a mishmash of Shintao and Knight of the Chalice, gaining stuff like extra damage with favored weapons, which is your hand wraps, gaining the Whirlwind Cleaves from Paladin, 
as well as violence begets violence. Um, you get improved evasion. Uh, and on top of that, you're also going to be picking up some other cool abilities like the Exalted Smite overall. Um, important note about this tree, I think this is a tree that probably could use the, the most work out of all of the new ones that they've added in. However, I still think it's pretty cool and even better than pretty cool. You know what's better than pretty cool? Radiant Servant. You can't use Vanguard on a Paladin because or on a Sacred Fist because they don't get shields. They don't even get shield proficiency. So instead, they get Radiant Servant. That's right. So the Cleric Radiant Servant Healing Tree is now a Paladin exclusive. So let me just load up Kit Fisto here and we'll take a quick gander. This means if you ever wanted to play as a Healing Paladin, you can now play a Healing Paladin starting at level one as long as you play as a um, Sacred Fist Paladin. It's right here. You play a Sacred Fist and you gain the ability to use Radiant Servant, a Paladin tree. Turn all those turn undeads to instantly turning undead. You can be casting out tons and tons of healing power while also punching people with your cool monk attacks. So, of course, you've got this, like, extra fire enhancement on your fingers, which does more damage. I love the way this looks, by the way. It's very, very cool. You've got the Sacred Defender tree, and as I said, Sacred Defender has stuff that says, while in medium or heavy armor, well, now you qualify for this. Up here, um, you know, extra improving your aura of courage. This is increased armor class and magic missile protection. So you have a lot of cool stuff here that says while you're in heavy armor, and you count as heavy armor while you're using your hand wraps. And as I said, additionally, the Sacred Fist, um, you know, you get extra damage here. Some of the cores give you some cool power-ups, so you get stuff like, you know, the Remove Disease uh, applies greater restoration, just like Knight of the Chalice. Immunity to Energy Raid, just like Knight of the Chalice. You've got, when you turn undead, you and your by allies gain extra key um, when they hit stuff, which is kind of interesting. And then the Capstone gives you 25 absorption to all fire, as well as some other stuff. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, overall, I think that the uh, Sacred Fist Paladin is probably my favorite design wise in terms of the ideas i think this is very cool getting the sacred defender being able to pick up the extra lay on hands being able to get the healing from radiant servant the sacred fist you can make a really cool nifty healing fighting paladin tank healer hybrid thing it's very very interesting um, i just think that the sacred fist is a little all over the place um, and i'm hoping that they'll be toning it up however you might have noticed that there's a lot of different options here with these archetypes because i said you just created a level one um, you just pick it. It Let's say you want to level up as an archetype, so I'm playing Paladin and I need to level up. Um, I can talk to the Cleric Trainer, and when I want to advance to the next level, whoops, wrong person, they'll give you the option. They'll say, oh, do you want to be a Cleric, or do you want to be a Dark Apostate? Now, as I said, I can't take Paladin, Sacred Fist, and Paladin Regular, but I can take Paladin and Dark Apostate. I could take Stormsinger and Dark Apostate if I wanted. I could take, uh, you know, multi-class with Fighter or whatever it is, and it just tells you underneath what it is right here. So you have that little space. If you multi-class, you get another um, character or like class level and then the actual specialization or archetype of it right there. So it's pretty easy to do. It's pretty intuitive. It, like Mike said, it might seem a little bit confusing when it first gets started, but we have that. Now, I'm going to link to all the resources below so you can find all the descriptions about why they're doing it, how they're doing it, what the purpose of what's going on here is. But overall, um, I'm very excited about uh, this system. I think it's going to be very good. Now, if you've been looking over at some of the notes and you're like, I don't know, Strim Tom, this Sacred Fist uh, could use this extra ability or like Radiant Servant. That seems weird. And you want to have any notes, feel free to post them in the comments below. But no one's going to read them. Like, I'll read them, and I'll think your comments are cool, and we'll talk about it, we'll have an argument in the discussion there, um, but if you want the devs to read your comments, make sure you do go to the links I'm going to be posting in the description, and post your comments there so they can read them, because they're looking for feedback right now, they want to get as much as they can to make this system as good as possible, and I'm super stoked for archetypes. Um, if you want to hear more about this, I'm going to be uploading a video later where I actually uh, sat down with Linabel for about an hour and a half, who did a lot of the work on this, and we just chatted about archetypes. So that will be coming out soon, and you'll be able to check out that uh, as soon as it's up. But anyways, this is all I have for you today, so thank you for watching. I hope you had a fantastic time. I'm so stoked for more archetypes to be added to this system, to, for these to get polished up. You can expect to see this in about like a month and a half or so, probably a month and a half, two months. This is my guess. I have no inside data. This is just literally a throwing it at the wall guess. We'll see what happens, but uh, hopefully something good will come out of it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and Paladin Fist On! That's not a great way to end a YouTube video. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm going to get a fist on. I don't know about that one. That one's kind of weird. Storm Sing Away! I don't know about that one. And I don't really want to say Dark Apostate again, so I'm not going to do that.